Welcome to everybody that is uh, here to see our road uh, to civil rights scholars do their presentation for uh, the coursework that they did this year. The Road to Civil Rights Summer Course was an opportunity for DeMatha students to encounter firsthand historical and sacred places which were significant to the civil rights movement. Over seven days through nine states and 2,000 miles, students visited Fisk University, the National Civil Rights Museum at the Lorraine Motel, which was the site of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination. They visited the Edmund Pettus Bridge, Brown Chapel AME Church, the Legacy Museum, the National Memorial for Peace and Justice, the city of St. Jude Parish, and the National Center for Human and Civil Rights in Atlanta. They did this in an effort to grow in the understanding of the work, dedication, and sacrifice of those committed to bringing justice and equality to places that it did not exist, as well as to learn the historical context in which those events took place. The objective of the course was to encounter this history and by doing so be transformed by it. The students read appropriate literary and historical material, kept a journal, and have collaborated on a presentation that they are now going to present uh, to us to show what they've grown and what they've come to understand about not only their country, but themselves. I'm now gonna hand it to our first presenter. Thank you, Mr. Smith. My name is Chase Alexander. I am class of 2025 and my portion of this presentation is Fisk University. Our first, our first major stop on the civil rights trip was to Fisk University in Nashville, Tennessee. It was a very large campus and a lot of history. In fact, the campus was a former slave plantation, which you can, which you can see by this bell right here. This bell was a warning bell for when the, for when the Ku Klux Klan woke would run through the campus and attack the students. Here are some paintings in the social hall of the campus. Again, this painting right here showing the history of the campus. And over here are the, is the Fisk Choir. Now, Nashville is known for being a town of music. And this is, in fact, why. Because of the choir who would go all around Nashville singing to different parts of it and spreading the culture. Here in the library, we have some books written by famous figures in the civil rights movement and a copy of the Lincoln Bible encased in bulletproof glass. Now, this stop was very impactful for me, especially because I never actually seen how large a slave plantation was. And knowing that something that this, that something this awful could be turned into something so good for the community is impactful to me. And I would like to turn it over to my colleague, Kevin Carey. Hello, my name is Kevin Carey. I am also class 2025, and our second location for our trip on the road to civil rights was the National Civil Rights Museum at the Lorraine Motel, which is the same hotel that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. had been assassinated in. And you can also see this is the room that Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was, was staying in just before he was assassinated. This right here is a Freedom Rider bus, which both white and black Americans had ridden on, but was destroyed by people who had not wanted them to go because they were for, they were for protecting and trying to get rights for black Americans, which really impacted me because I cannot understand why anyone would just d completely destroy and kill people for solely just the purpose of not wanting one class to be on equal level of everybody. And finally, we have the Cambridge Nonviolent Action Committee, which also fought for black rights by doing marches and protests, but they would never enact violence on anybody. And now 
I will hand it over to my colleague, Nicholas DeLeon. Thank you, Kevin. My name is Nicholas DeLeon. I'm also class of 2025, and I'll also be talking about the Lorraine Motel or National Civil Rights Museum. We were joined by Professor McKinney, and I don't think we have, I don't have his picture up here, but he was giving us a tour of the museum, and he was walking us through different parts of the exhibits and what that meaning was to him and why it was important. And he had very interesting points as we walked through the museum. Um, for example, he talked about the economic interests of slave owners, and he talked about how when everybody else was doing it and the economy was booming because of it, people are more inclined to do it as well in the pursuit of wealth. And to me, that was pretty impactful because it touched on the fact that not all people who owned slaves necessarily hated black people, but they just did it because it was in their economic interest and they saw it as, at that time as a way just for them to gain more wealth. And that was pretty impactful to me and hard to understand, but nevertheless, we got it. And um, it was one of my favorite museums because we were able to walk through the, wall, walk through the halls of the motel and kind of see what it was like and pictured here are the, is the hotel room that he stayed in and the balcony that he walked out onto where he was assassinated. And he was actually assassinated from one of these windows over here where he shot a marksman rifle and killed MLK when he was standing out here addressing the crowd. And um, like I said, this was really impactful to me to be able to stand in that place where such a great man was and it was just great to see kind of what he stood for as well in the museum. And it's just a really impactful moment for me. But now I'll be passing it over to my classmate, also 25, Devin. Hi, my name is Devin Lewis. I'm a junior here at DeMatha. And uh, I did Selma. I did uh, my presentation on Selma, Alabama. And so right here is Selma right here. It's Selma 57 years later after Bloody Sunday. Then the Edmund Pence Bridge is to the right over here. And then to my right is a memorial for the late John Lewis, who was a civil rights leader and was original organizer on the March on Washington right here. And so picture on the left is the Brown Chapel AME Church in Selma, where the starting point for the marches were and SLS meetings were held here at this church also. And then to the right is uh, a speech by Dr. Kane, I Have a Dream, his most famous speech. Then there's a statue of him, and then that's speech engraved in the um, in statue. And so right here is a civil rights freedom wall with all like previous civil rights leaders named. And then right here is a BLM inspired basketball court at a nearby elementary school. And I will now be passing it to my classmate, Henry Rutz. Hi, my name is Henry Rutz, also class of 2025. I did my part of the presentation on the Legacy Museum in Montgomery, Alabama. In the front of the Legacy Museum were these pieces of art, like this one, featuring civil rights leaders such as Frederick Douglass and a statue right here of Rosa Parks and some other people kind of stepping out of a wall, I think is really impactful, like kind of sums up the civil rights movement a bit. Like you're stepping out of the shadows and uh, talking to people and you had to pay attention. Uh, they were there. And then here's a picture of all of us in front of the Legacy Museum and again, legacy museum in the background they didn't allow pictures inside so we didn't have a lot this is the closest thing we had I think the legacy museum was definitely the most or the biggest in terms of topic and material and I think the most important thing or thing that impacted me the most was a huge wall uh, went like up to the ceiling like you had to crane your neck to look up at just 
jars of dirt from all sorts of lynchings across the United States, the soil from that ground, where a black person was murdered or tortured by white mobs. And it's just so sad to see that many. And then it was in Montgomery, Alabama, and we were hosted by the Montgomery Catholic High School. And that was us in the morning talking about what we were going to do that day and about the Legacy Museum. I'll pass it on to my colleague, Ada Naka. Hello, I'm Ada Nagra, class of uh, 2024. Um, I'm also covering the Legacy Museum. Uh, so yeah, in the morning, we discussed like what we were going to see in the museum, uh, and we went over Dr. McKinney's points about how to get more out of an experience in a museum. Uh, and then after that, we, we arrived at the museum. Um, as my classmate said, photos were not allowed inside. So we walked around a bit outside. We saw Legacy Plaza, I believe. Um, there were a lot of very interesting artworks there depicting different leaders in civil rights. Uh, after that, we entered the museum. Um, inside the museum, the first thing that greeted us was a display of uh, how many slaves died in the middle crossing between Africa and America. And I believe the number was about 2.3 or more million people drowned going across. And I just found that really impactful because you think about slavery as being something in the U.S. and not necessarily how many people died on the way to the U.S. Um, another thing that really stood out to me was calls to people in jail, um, some on death row, just about their crimes and about what they did and what got them there. And just seeing some of the flaws in our criminal justice system brought to light, um, I found that really impactful. Uh, I'll now be passing the microphone to my classmate, Kai Blackman. I'm Kai Blackman, I'm a senior. Um, this part of the trip, we were in Montgomery, Alabama for the Legacy um, Lynch Memorial. Um, this part of the trip right here, this is the beginning of the garden meditative space showing that the injustices to African people in America did not start just with, you know, civil rights or lynchings, that it started with slavery. So this really depicts, you know, Africans in bondage right at the slave trade. Um, this memorial really showed the um, magnitude of lynching, something that affected me because I didn't know how much really lynchings happened in America at the time. I thought it was just like a small amount, or like, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't that many, but this really showed, you know, all these caskets and names showed the, um, the magnitude of amount of like lynchings in the, in the country. Um, this part of the trip was the community reckoning spot where they have signs from all the different uh, towns or spaces where lynchings happen in America, where these communities um, acknowledged what happened, gave the backstory on the, um, on the situations and, you know, maybe apologize. All these stories on these um, signs basically have the same um, plot. Uh, African American was wrongly convicted of something or he was punished by a white mob and none of them were convicted for a crime. And with that, I'll be handing off the presentation to Ruben Hezzy. Uh, my name is Ruben Hezzy, class of 2024, like Kai. And like he said, we were in Montgomery for this part of the trip. And as we came in, we were told that it was like a meditative space, that it was um, a somber place. And we, as we were walking through, it was pretty empty. We, it was um, quiet. We could walk through, like we could, o we overlooked um, the city of Montgomery right here. And as we're walking through, it was just, um, what, what impacted me the most was that the caskets were from everywhere, from all over the country. Like usually we were going through the South, but before this, I hadn't really known that they were ha that these lynchings happened all over in Maryland, Massachusetts, Oregon, Wyoming, any state you can name, any county in the country, there's something that happened there and that was really impactful for me. And there were sculptures and uh, statues all over that um, made the experience even more immersive and um, like really taught that um, these lynchings have stopped because of the actions of people like this and of our actions and how we educate ourselves. Um, yeah, and then this is part was the most sobering for me just because of how meditative it was, how quiet everything was, how you really could, it was really a place you just sat with your thoughts and really thought and like put um, names to the numbers like 
all these names all over the country you just saw like usually we see it um in terms of numbers like thousands of people were killed between um the 1800s and 1900s but when you see these names it, it makes you like put a soul to the to the numbers of all the people that um were unfortunately killed um due to lynchings with that i'll pass it to my classmates um, henry lawrence Hi, I'm Henry Lawrence, I'm a senior, and I'll be talking about St. Jude Parish in Montgomery, Alabama. So this is the place where 25,000 people camped in the Selma Montgomery March. And so when we got there, it was a little weird. So we were waiting in the parking lot for a good 20 minutes, trying to figure out where the exhibit is, until Dr. McMahon made a phone call, and someone who worked at the church came outside. He directed us over to this small little door propped it over, open with a brick, and said, kick the brick out when you're leaving. And then we went in. So it was very, it was a really strange start. And while we were in the exhibit, it was very different because it was mostly pictures taken from the event with little to no description of what's actually happening. So, I mean, I, from this whole experience, I think this parish of St. Jude has a really interesting story to tell, but I just think that the exhibit set up doesn't do it justice because this is a place where so many people stayed and gathered and had joy together during such a dark time in the civil rights movement and you know I feel like just having some pictures doesn't really do it justice and with that I'll be passing it on to my classmate Darren Pepper. Uh, we arrived in Atlanta to visit the National Center for Civil and Human Rights. Uh, this was on my birthday. That's why I'm seen in the middle of the first picture there. Upon arrival, you can see the different languages and cultures all telling their own stories. Uh, on that first picture there, you can see languages such as Spanish, Hebrew, and Arabic. Uh, something I learned were the lack of liberties around the world. If you look at the first picture there, the darker the red the less liberties that country has. And you see how many countries are red. Uh, in the United States, we have our liberties secured, but we tend to forget that it's not like that everywhere else in the world. And something else that I learned were the roles people play in totalitarianism, such as bystanders who see a problem and do nothing about it, uh, victims, the people who suffer from the problem, and upstanders, people who see a problem and do something about it. And in that picture there, those are faces of people who are upstanders in various countries such as Iran, Iraq, uh, China, etc. The National Center for Civil and Human Rights impacted me by showing me the struggles people have that I don't even have to think about. Uh, something memorable to me was the artwork. If you look here is a collage of different peoples and things from all around the world, all surrounding the peace sign. So, you know, though we're different, we have to live in peace. And here's a quilt with hands of different colors, all reaching out to each other, showing like, though we're different, we still need each other. We still need to like, hold on to each other. And with that, I pass this, the mic to my colleague, Daniel Smith. Oh, I'm Daniel Smith, class of 2024. The final stop on our trip was Morehouse College. Um, this first image is of a mural at M Morehouse College that depicted um, either uh, it started off with the transatlantic slave trade and then moved forward into a Civil War battalion, which one of my favorite parts about that is each um, individual in the battalion was a former SGA president and throughout the years they update the wall to make sure that the alumni of Morehouse are shown on the mural. Um, famous athletes, Oprah, along with just amazing art is just, I, th this, uh, these pictures don't even show how large it is, but it, it goes all the way down this street and it just shows creation, it shows everything that really built Morehouse. That is on campus. They had recently, so I looked it up, the blue was just added. It used to be kind of like, um, 
it looked like graffiti, but it was like a white white wall behind it, and then they painted it blue and kind of cleaned it up, I guess. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this was probably probably my favorite part about visiting Morehouse. So Professor Ilya Davis, who's a professor of philosophy at Morehouse, um, walked us through main building, and each founder. Uh, successful alumni, people who helped Morehouse, each get a portrait. And there's over 500 portraits of people who impacted the college. Um, what's interesting is that there is a lot of white men on the wall, which is mostly from donors and founders of the university. And then as they move forward, the alumni, there's people like Barack Obama and Oprah who then got portraits. Uh, Bar Professor Ilya Davis then took us to Graves Hall, which is now, um, it was the, st the um, first building on Morehouse's campus, and now it's a freshman dorm. But what stuck out to me about this was there's a grave in front of Graves Hall that um, is a statue of a professor at Morehouse. And on the grave, it states what a Morehouse man should be. Did you, are you familiar with that? And um, it really was kind of like, you have to meet a challenge. Like everywhere in this, everywhere in the world, you're gonna have to be up to a challenge. And you're gonna have to face it no matter what. And that was kind of a theme that that went throughout our whole trip. That you, like Darren said, you can't be a bystander. You need to be an upstander in this world. And with that, I'll give it to Dr. McMahon. Thank you, Dan, and my thanks to all of of the students who went and to Mr. Smith who went with us. And I have to say this was an extraordinary DeMatha trip. The, we were blessed to have a former student, Mark Jefferson, who's Morehouse uh, class of 91. He helped set us up with different uh, speakers, which was terrific for us. A student from DeMatha 1991, James Sonavanez, hosted us for dinner uh, one night while we were in Atlanta. And we had lots of other DeMatha alums reach out to us throughout the trip and uh, ask us if next year we could make time for them and that they would make time for, for us. So we're very hopeful of going again. With, I'd really like to thank not only all the students, but all of the families who supported us uh, throughout this entire trip. It has been a, a terrific thing and a real example of what happens when one DeMatha works together. Thanks so much, everybody.